I decided to stay here today and I have uh, spent the day getting on with some work. Um, fortunately, I had the presence of mind to stock up on some tinned delicacies. So I am having for my dinner uh, tinned chicken in white sauce into which I have put some tinned garden peas and I'm gonna have that with tinned new potatoes. Just heating the potatoes up. And also the chicken in white sauce with the peas in it. Looks rather nice. Big chunks of, I'm assuming it's chicken. Right, let's try this out. Don't look half bad, really. Mmm. Very good. Oh well. Back to the big push tomorrow. Have you heard the tale of Aslan and the Gent? Have you seen their travels before? Well, did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more? Sold up, downsized for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. Good morning, and it's time to move on. That thunder last night was quite epic. And it turns out that one of the bangs I heard wasn't thunder at all, but in fact an explosion at a biogas reclamation centre just on the outskirts of Oxford. Fortunately, nobody was harmed. Today, I'm going to be travelling about seven miles to a little area called Enslow. The canal twists and winds and along the way we drop down through five locks first of which is not far around this bend. A real sense of remoteness here and I would quite happily stay in this area a lot longer but as I say I don't have the food supplies I just have a few tins I mean this morning um, I had uh, tinned chili con carne for breakfast I have two more tins I have a beef curry and another tin of chili con carne and potatoes and beans that's just basically one small meal a day I have absolutely nothing else so I need to get to Kidlington tomorrow 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, even on the canals. I mean, Oxford is what 20 miles away, but even on the canals in the U in Little England, it's easy to find uh, yourself in a bit of a, a sudden situation, and you think that there is nothing for miles around, and I have no food. I could start getting malnourished. Um, yeah, and it creeps up on you. You don't even notice. You suddenly like, whoa. Yeah, I need to get to Kidlington tomorrow to buy food. Amazing. There's very few places in the UK you can actually witness genuine horse herd behaviour. Difficult to tell if this is play fighting or uh, actually has some meaning behind it. I could stand and watch that for hours, but I need to get on. That's what you call a leaky lock. And the uh, beam on this lock had uh, rotted away, so they chopped the bad bit off and bolted on these scaffold boards as a makeshift repair. Very effective. That was Hayford Common Lock, and now about three quarters of a mile to Allen's Lock. Alan's lock and it looks like the ground paddles are open so I'd say there's a boat coming up. Actually the lock must have been almost full because they're filling it back up because I came along. How cool is that?
very helpful lady there. She used to live in Oxford, but she said it was always her dream to move to Upper Hayford so that she could work the locks for passing boat. The lady also mentioned that coming up is Lower Hayford and not only is the water point here, there's also a train station and she says that within 15 minutes you can be in Oxford. Hmm. I mean the only reason I need to get to Kidlington is to get food. What if I moored up, got the train, went into Oxford and got my shopping? Hmm. It adds a lot more variables, a lot more things uh, that could possibly go wrong. I mean there's a lot of train strikes at the moment and I wouldn't want to get into Oxford and then find the last train was like three o'clock and uh, I won't be able to get back. Yep, there's also a lift bridge here. How am I going to operate this? Ah, thank heavens, it's hydraulic. Ah, thank heavens for that. I was starting to get a few nightmares, eh? That was uneventful. I don't want too many of those because they do take a significant chunk out of your schedule. Especially when you're on a humanitarian mission, like what I am. The more I think about it, the more I'm inclined to go with the train solution. There's plenty of Armco along here. Right, I've taken the plunge. I'm going to get the train. I haven't decided yet whether Oxford or Banbury. I know Banbury better than I do Oxford, but I don't recall there being a supermarket anywhere within sensible distance of the railway station. And as for Oxford, I have definitely no clue. Right, let's go and get a train, eh? I have no doubt that Aslan will be fine there for two or three hours. Why wouldn't she? I'm more up in places sometimes for five days. Two weeks in Banbury.
It's a relative rarity to find a village with no real kind of through traffic. Something of a rarity here, a working phone box. This one hasn't been turned into a library or a defibrillator station. It's actually got a working phone in it. At least I assume it's working. Yep, please insert a credit card. Oh wow. Well. I think this has to go in the top three of my prettiest villages list. If not, number one. So many thatched cottages, no new build that I could see, and not a through road. Back on the main road, but even that's quieter compared to some main roads I've been on, and heading towards the train station. Here we are then, Hayford Railway Station. Looks like I need to be over the other side for Banbury. Oh my God, it says next train to Banbury 2.40. And it's now two o'clock. Do not try to board or leave the train when the doors are closing. Well, that was a bit touch and go at one point. I got off the train, but while I was on my train, no conductor came up to me, you know, to sell me a ticket. So I got off the train, walked along, you know, through the various corridors and so on. Got to the turnstiles where you're supposed to scan your ticket. And I said, uh, I, I don't have a ticket. I've got on at Hayford, but nobody approached me to sell me a ticket. Oh, oh you know, he says, uh, you're supposed to have a ticket before you get on the train. I said, well, you know, obviously I didn't have one because, as I say, no one approached me. Um, and they were British Transport Police stood nearby as well and, you know. Um, but in the end, they sold me a ticket. I mean, how am I supposed to have a ticket if uh, nobody bloody sells you one? Eh? So I'm now back at Banbury and about to go in the very same Morrisons that I went in when I was moored up on the south side of Banbury there for a week before I went off you know, on this three-day push, supposedly, uh, to Kidlington. Welcome aboard this Great Western Railway service Wow, I don't want to be doing that again for some time. I mean, it was fun, 
I managed to somehow squeeze uh, five days shopping into my backpack and a little carrier bag. It's now quarter to six. Quite a pleasant evening, so just walk back to Aslo now. And that'll do me. So I'll see you all in the morning. Night, night. Good morning, and what a game changer that train station was. I had a very real sense of panic a few days ago. It suddenly hit me. I'm miles from anywhere, and I have no food, apart from a tin of chilli, a tin of peas, and a tin of potatoes. That's not going to last about the next two days. Breakfast and dinner. As I say, the train was a game changer. Today I will be getting to Enslow. Six miles and three locks. Afterwards, it's around three and a half miles to a mooring somewhere near Kidlington. Hayford Wharf? There's a water point here and I was going to top the tank up but I'll be okay until the next tap. There's something quite surreal about one minute happily chugging along the canals and then next you're on a train whizzing back to where you were a few days previously and you cover that distance in the space of 15 minutes. You walk out the station and bam you're back into craziness and modernity. The contrast in that space of time, just 15 minutes, all this and then poof. yeah quite surreal you spend three days traveling about 12 miles and then 15 minutes later you're back where you started A 15-minute train journey can also take you from the city to this. First of the three locks today, though depending how far I get, there may be four.
I'm just going to check to see if there's a boat coming that wants to come up the lock. If not, I'll have to fill it. Nope. This is Aslan. Yep, Aslan says hello. Bloody hell, this, that boat's leaning. Bloody hell, get your rope, quick. Oh my giddy up. I don't believe it. <laughs> 